Alright there geezers, Jules here for FGS, home of the Future Game Show, and you know what? At the time of recording, we've recently just had that horrible turning point in the year where the nights have begun to draw in and the temperature is beginning to drop quicker than my interest in a film where it turns out the main characters aren't suddenly going to stop the plot and have a quick game of Warhammer. Yeah! In short, and to borrow a phrase from a once popular TV show, winter is ejaculating. That doesn't sound right. Anyway, and because Jack Frost is edging his way closer, as it were, the desire to stay inside is only growing more and more. And the same can actually be said of the games we're covering today, because they all feature a strange mechanic that actively punishes players from daring to step foot outside after dark. Whether it's more challenging enemies, a horrible curse taking place on your character, or straight up death, these games want you to be home by bedtime and not a moment later. So let's have a chat as I'm Jules, this is FGS and don't play these games at night. And remember, this is the Deep Cut with Jules Gill, baby, so don't expect to see the likes of Dying Light, Minecraft, or Dead Rising here because you know what? They're too obvious and deep cuts only. So let's kick things off with number eight, Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. Now when you look at Sakuna or Sakuna of Rice and Ruin, you won't immediately think of this as a title that dials up the difficulty after the watershed, especially when 90% of this game focuses on the absolute adrenaline fueled rush of managing a rice field. <sighs> Seriously, you'll spend a lot of your time in this game planting seeds, weeding the field, managing the water levels, pulling out the rice and even grinding it down so much so that you'll almost forget that the island that you're doing all of this on is actually infested with monsters and you will actually need to venture outside to beat them up in order to unlock new skills or prevent them from overrunning your small village. However, while it might seem prudent to go out at all times possible to add some gains to your grains, doing so as night falls will be anything but a rice time for our hero. This is because the game boosts the strength and durability of the monsters to absurd levels, effectively acting as a mechanic to stop players from grinding too much and directing them to focus on their crops and getting a good night's sleep. And by the way, this mechanic is known in the game dev world as Beef Gates, and I absolutely love this. And trust me, once you've had that marbled meaty door slammed in your face a few times, you may well want to become vegetarian, as pain is all that awaits you in Sukuna or Sakuna once the sun begins to dip. Plus, who would want to leave these characters anyway? They're all so lovable, I just want to stay around the fireside and have a chat with them. Number seven, Darkwood. Now I ask you friends, what would you get if you took Hotline Miami, blended it with HR Geiger, and then sprinkled on a cheeky few flecks of abject and crushing horror? Well firstly, you'd have a drink that tastes just awful, but you'd also have a concoction resembling the refreshing and totally underappreciated 2014 horror title, Darkwood. This game, man, it is that type of title that will just pick apart your sanity morsel by morsel, pushing horrific imagery into your face at every given turn, and then ladling on a thick soup of dread and, oh, <laughs> my therapy bill is going to be quite large this month. In short, it is goosebumps time, my friend, because reader beware, you're in for a bloody scare. It came from beneath the sink. It was a potato or a sponge with vampire teeth. I've talked about this before, it was a weird time, goosebumps. Now in all fairness, gathering resources and exploring the large world around you in the day isn't exactly a picnic, especially when all of the locals seem to be either wanting you dead or look so particularly horrible and ugly that spending time with them is going to give you wrinkles from that face pursing that you're now doing. You're just like, oh, Christ, <laughs> somebody's forgot to moisturise. It was me. Still, being outside collecting firewood and nearly being eaten alive by everything with a shadow sure does beat the hell of trying to survive the shadows themselves, because once night begins to fall, boy howdy, this is a terror simulator and a half. You see, the issue is, is that you can't, or at least shouldn't, leave your cabin when the night falls, and instead you'll have to defend it from all manner of monsters that are trying to turn your innards into outards. And this boils down to you setting traps, arming yourself like like you're a farmer from Hot Fuzz, barricading the doors, and finally, well, picking a god from the pantheon of gods around and just praying to them hard, bloody hard. I won't lie to you, friends. Yay! 
The difficulty in just surviving the night is so extreme that new players will likely have their journey into Darkwood cut short on the very first cycle. Yet, if you can persevere long enough, well, maybe, just maybe, you can make something of this rather horrible place. But my advice though, well, stick it on right move. I mean, to be honest, with a coat of paint, I'm sure that you could sell it to students. I mean, we've all lived in places like this, right? They will put up with anything, and I'll pay a high price. It is a disgusting thing, landlordism, isn't it? Gross. Ew. And speaking of where I live, my friend, let's talk about the FGS YouTube channel and how that there's a fair few people that are still watching the Deep Cut and other shows on this platform and still haven't actually subscribed yet. But you know what, mate? Just do it. It's a favour to yourself. It's a gift that keeps on giving. And why is that? Well, because not only will you stay up to date with all of our daily gaming content, but if you hit that notification bell as well, you'll be notified when I go live-ish, premiere-ish with these Deep Cuts every single Friday. I should be in the live chat here. Although thinking about it, am I on holiday when this is going to air? Probably. <laughs> Good plug, Jules. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> I'm not doing another take. That's what you get. <laughs> Number six, XCOM UFO Defense. Ah, XCOM, my first true love. And by that I have this game to thank for teaching me that life is so brutally unfair sometimes that the best way to deal with it is just to swallow that <laughs> sandwich and smile because <laughs> You never want to let them see that they've got you down. Oh Christ, let's just move on, this is too real. Yet, here's the thing, kids these days, they don't even know. They don't even know Mark. They don't even know that they don't even know Mark. How little they don't even know. And they definitely do not know about how little they know about how difficult the XCOM series was. Because while the rebooted series is definitely challenging, this first game right here, well, it was absolutely atrociously cruel at points. This is because while the game is a slog normally, things are dialed up to the extreme should you take on the alien menace at night. As here, your visibility is next to nothing, and so you'll have the risk of running right into an alien with each and every step. You're just kind of like, da da, da da, da da. Yeah, it's the Pink Panther theme. Da da, da da, da. Don't sue me, by the way. Da da, da da. There's an alien. Ba da, ba da, Burda, burda, burda. I'm just having a good time now. Right. Now, you can alleviate some of this pain by using flares to light the way. Not Ric Flair, by the way. Different type of flare. Don't know why I even mentioned that. But as the game never actually clues you into this, it's likely a lesson that you only learned through the sweet embrace of death. And even worse, it actually takes action points to use them, meaning that you're basically just lighting up your troops and quite often leaving them exposed. <laughs> and if that wasn't bad enough, the alien menace isn't affected by the night at all, meaning that they will pie you off with plasma rounds from unseen locations with near perfect accuracy. So in summary, your team will die, you have a heart attack every other turn, and your plans will fall to ruin. So yeah, tell you what, just stay in bed and you can deal with this heaping pile of bull <coughs> tomorrow. That's tomorrow Jules's problem. And he's a sucker. Number five, Death Road to Canada. Now with Death Road to Canada, you only need to take one look at this game to know that it does not do things by halves, you know? <laughs> because when you're fighting off over 500 zombies on screen at a time and doing so as an oiled up wrestler being supported by a bloody genie and a dog with a shotgun, it's hard to see exactly where the developers went off the rails, but I'm sure glad they did because this game is amazing fun. From start to finish, your pulse will pound in measure to the swings of your weapons, as downtime in this game, well, it, it simply isn't an option. And with all of the mad characters and interactions that you have, no two playthroughs will actually ever be the same. In fact, the only constant in this game is that there's one golden rule, never go outside at night. Because if you thought that moving through crowds of flesh tearing undead was hard in the day, well at night, it's kind of like battling through hell with a rapidly melting ice sculpture of an elegant swan, and all you've brought for armor is a leopard print thong. If you spend too long in one area, you'll start to see the sun set, and as it does, the enemies begin to grow more and more aggressive and appear in greater number. Now, on lower difficulties, admittedly, you do have some considerable wiggle room to get out of the area, but on high difficulty levels, well, the game also features a permadeath mechanic, so I'd wager that you'd be looking at having a new team in short order. Have fun! Number four, Pathologic 1 and 2. Oh me! Oh my! What's that in the sky? Why, it's H-Bomber Guy's favourite video game to talk about Pathologic and its sequel. And yet another chance for me to plug that absolutely outstanding deep dive into these games and its sequel because, you know what? No, it, it doesn't actually need any help because it's already on millions of views. They don't even know I exist. But still, great work. 
Anyway, brown nosing aside, let's talk about brown trousers, and not just the fancy burlap sack leg warmers that you're wearing in these games, because, well, you don't have two coins to rub together, but instead we're going to talk about the utter manure-inducing fear that you'll experience exploring these games at night. Now, this all comes to a turtle head thanks to both titles taking their already slog-like gameplay and then adding in thieves, muggers, and good old villains of the week who decide to operate under the veil of night. Now, this abundance of extra enemies, when combined with a combat system that feels kind of like fighting in your dreams for all the damage you don't seem to do, and the abject scarcity of weapons and bullets for your firearms means that you'll likely find yourself bleeding out in an alleyway or running very, very slowly away from the mob and then bleeding out in an alleyway. I mean, sure, there is also the third option of trying to kill all of them, but doing so will likely mean that all your ammo is now gone, and now you have to spend valuable resources on bullets instead of food, and so now you'll be starving to death in that alleyway instead. Cool, cool, great, excellent. Just don't go outside. Don't even play this game if you want to have an easy time, if I'm honest. <laughs> you will suffer. You will suffer. Number three, Pirates of the Caribbean Online Raven's Cove. Okay, my friends, it's time to talk about a game I know has not been on your radar in a long while, and for many more, never at all, because it's time to talk about the rather wonky and oft-forgotten Pirates of the Caribbean Online game, which finally walks the plank in 2013. Yet while this game might be sitting on the seabed and rifling through Davy Jones's locker, probably throwing away his math textbook because it's a cheeky little rotter, it turns out that in this game dead men do tell tales, and most likely it's a story entitled, I just kicked your late night ass. For you see, my dear salty dwarves and swashbucklers, while it might be tempting to head out and raid the open world of its treasures from dusk till dawn, heading to Raven's Cove at night is a bad idea for everyone involved. And that's because while in the day it's all pleasantries and low-level mobs, the knob gets ripped right off in the evening as this area spawns in enemies known as Rage Ghosts in the night. Yeah. Now I know what you're probably thinking, Jules, you wet powder keg, I'm the mighty pirate bumchin, because I can't grow a beard yet. I've sailed every sea and counted every grain of salt in this game. A mere ghost won't get in my way, and you know what? To that I say, whoa now, whoa now, hey now, whoa now, hey now, whoa now. Don't worry about the beard, you're as beautiful just the way you are. But also, ghosts right here, these ones right here, these raised ghosts right here, well they can kill most players in one hit thanks to their attack doing, um, let me just have a quick look at this again. Oh yeah, 30,000 damage. What? And the last time that I checked, you have considerably less health than that. So you know what? I would steer well clear of this area at night, my friends. Well, unless you want to go through all of this for a commonly found Easter egg party hat drop, which is just more and more tempting the more you think about it. I'll tell you what, we'll have a go together. We'll load up the game right now, even though it's dead, in skit form. Okay, you ready? Here we go, I'm donning my pirate gear, mark if you will, a PNG of a pirate hat on top of my head. Thank you very much. Right, I'm gonna take on, I'm just gonna limber up right now and I'm gonna take on this rage ghost which I'm hoping you've animated here. I'm gonna take him on right now. Oh, oh, oh I died. Moving on. Number two, Cataclysmo. Welcome to the end, my friend. Well, not technically the end as this is the second to last entry. Whatever. The night times of Cataclysmo sure will definitely spell the end of many gamers because hot damn did somebody ever leave the gates open of hell each time the sun begins to set. However, this shouldn't come as a surprise to players of Cataclysmo because it warns them from the jump that a great evil will ravage the land every night and you best hope you built your defences strong and your walls high. Now this boils down to the player engaging in an RTS base builder loop during the day, building traps and securing mining routes and managing their workers. And and then haul an ass back to the town centre when the horns begin to blare to fend off wave after wave of deliriously devilish enemies. And let me tell you friends, the battles are fierce, with enemies piling over one another to tear through your walls and buildings and then right through you, and in some dire circumstances will leave you with just your central keep come the dawn. It creates a powerful sense of dread throughout, and you'll come to mourn the workers who died the night prior, especially when you set out into the next day without their help to rebuild. It's just kind of like, oh bloody hell, John the Builder, the bricklayer's dead, oh bloody Deal, mate. Actually, probably that is that is a big problem because I'm seeing a lot of like missing bricks here. 
Bloody hell! This is a game as much about tactical battling as it is preparation, and where one simple mistake or misplaced wall, well, it could end your run entirely. And number one, Road Warden. And so we close on Road Warden, a game that dropped in 2022, and if you're a fan of text-based adventure games, I must say is a must play, because I've not felt this emotionally distressed by words on a page since I found my grandmother's journal titled The Karma Sutra 2, but with more feet stuff. <laughs> Road Warden is a game that pulls no punches and will dole them out in spades, as this is a classic adventure game in all but presentation, which instead has some of the most well-considered sprite work that I've seen in ages. Yet if you thought that your quest of uniting the peoples of this strange land and making the roads safe for commerce was tough enough, try doing that under the Shroud of Night, because here, my friend, who oh, there be terror. From bandits, roaming wildlife and straight up undead, you do not want to be late home for tea in this game, and you best have a shelter planned out en route when you begin your daily journeys. Now what's utterly punishing about all of this is that you have a 40 day time limit, so you'll want to constantly push further and further into the dark, yet you do so at your own peril, as if you don't find a safe place to rest, well, you might just find out what happened to the previous road warden the hard way. Good luck. And there we go, my friends. I hope you did not play these games at night. Blur. <laughs> hope you enjoyed that. And please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. And if you want to chat to me on the social medias, you can do so over here. And you can follow my lovely editor, Mark, over on his social medias over there as well. But before I go, my friend, I just want to say one thing. Even though we spoke about the horrors of the night, let's start to shine some positive light on some subjects involving ourselves. You know what, my friend? Just be kind to yourself. That is the most simple form of these end of video messages that I can put out there because you deserve it. There's enough negativity in the world. There's enough people harshing on themselves. There's enough people harshing on each other. But just remember that one constant, like the North Star guiding you towards a direction, it is you are a massive ledge and you deserve the bloody best, all right? Love, happiness, and success. We all deserve these things as human beings. So do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise and live your goddamn and best life. As always, I've been Jules, you have been awesome, never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.